when talking about decimals, we are often talking about word problems that use decimals, which is very often money, right? And I think I said in a previous video that you hardly ever say three and a half dollars when you write it out. You're going to say three dollars and fifty cents. We're dealing with dollars and cents. Let's actually write those words because the topic of today's video is on cents. Not the money cents, but the ratio of per cents. Cent means a hundred. Whether we're speaking French and we say cent, which is the French word for a hundred, or speaking Latin or English, like century for a, thou for a thousand. Century for a hundred years, right? Cent means hundred. Per means we're talking about a rate, right? Miles per hour, feet per second. We're talking about speed as a rate or, or other per miles per gallon. How many miles can you go on one gallon of gasoline, right? Per means out of. Cent means a hundred. So. If I have 47 out of 100, that means 47 per 100, 47 per 100. Those two zeros on the percent sign come from the two zeros on the 100. The slash in the percent sign comes from the slash of division. It kind of looks like a sideways division symbol. Um, if we're a little fancier about how we write it, you can... Yeah, that's a better looking percent. That's all percents are. It's not just going by whatever place value we want. If I have 0.4, I want to recognize that as not four tenths, but how many hundredths, right? There's an invisible zero there. That's tenths hundredths, 40 hundredths. So that's 40 percent. 0.4 is 40 percent. 0 0.047, 0 tenths, 4 hundredths, that's 4 hundredths. But it's not just 4, it's 4 and then 7 in the next place below that. 4 and 7 tenths of a hundredth. 4.7 percent. Right? Converting between decimals, fractions, and percents is all just about what our units are. If I'm talking about percent, I'm saying that's how many hundredths I have. So I put a 40 in the hundredths place. 0 0.40 simplifies to 0 0.4. 4.7, that's 4.7 per, sorry, 4.7 percent, that's 4.7 per cent. So I'm writing 4.7 in the hundredths place. The 4 is in the hundredths place, and then the 7 comes after it. Now, sometimes we want our fraction to be reduced. So instead of going to a decimal, I'm going to say 40 out of 100. Let's switch colors to make that clear. I'm going a different direction. 40 out of 100. I can cancel a 10 really easily. Well, there's four tenths that go, goes along with the decimal four tenths, but if I want the reduced fraction, I'm going to cancel the two as well, get two fifths. Likewise, 4.7 out of 100, this isn't technically a, a fraction the way we're used to seeing it, right? We want a whole number divided by a whole number. So 4.7, to multiply that by 10, I get the whole number 47. So 100 times 10, I get the whole number 1,000. Are there any common factors between 47 and 1,000? No. There we go. That goes along with the decimal. 47 in the tenths, hundredths, thousandths. 47 thousandths, 47 thousandths. Right. There are all kinds of situations where we care about these particular units. How many hundredths do I have? So you have to be comfortable converting between decimals and fractions 
and percentages. Now if I start with a fraction that doesn't obviously turn into a decimal or percent, let's say um, 3 eighths, I can turn that into a percentage. Well, we already showed how I can do 8 times 125 to become 1,000. So if we happen to memorize that, I can do 3 times 125. 3 times 100 is 300. 3 times 25 is 75. So 375 thousandths, how many hundredths is that? Divide both by 10, I get 37.5 per 100. So that's 37.5%. That works, but only if we have this memorized, which I'm not expecting you to do. So how else can we turn 3 eighths into a percent? We do the long division. 3 divided by 8. Once we get our decimal, I'm going to look at this hundredths place. That's my percent if it's a whole number. And then if there's a remainder, we'll deal with that. So let's start. 8 goes into 30 only 3 times. 8 times 3 is 24. 30 minus 24 is 6. Bring down the 0. 8 goes into 67 times. 8 times 7 is 56, and I get a remainder of 4. So I can say 37, I'm thinking about percent, I'm thinking of this as the whole number percent, and 4 eighths. I could say uh, 37 and 4 eighths percent, 4 eighths reduces to a half, 37 and a half percent. And that's not wrong, but traditionally, most of the time, we're going to stick with decimals. 8 goes into 45 times, 8 times 5 is 40, so I get 37, 0.375, that's 37 hundredths with an extra 5, 37 with an extra 5 percent, right? And you probably, I hope, already noticed a half is the same as 0.5. There's a 37.5. So without any context to turn a fraction into a percentage, do the long division to get the decimal. 3 eighths equals 0.375. And then just look at the hundredths place. I have 37 hundredths, 0, 37, 37 hundredths, point whatever comes next in this case, 37.5%. And in some contexts, we'll just stop at the hundredths and use the remainder and get a mixed number for a percentage. That's up to you. All right, so there's turning fractions into percentages. We did turning decimals or nice fractions into percentages and vice versa. Um, in lots of contexts, you'll use percentages all the time. Like if you're in the medical field, you're dealing with um, a 3% solution of saline versus a 0.3% solution of saline. You need to understand the difference of those. Um, but most of the time, within each context, you're going to be dealing with percentages in a particular way. So converting, recognizing the difference between 3 and 0.3, um, that's about all we need right now.